Within my art practice, I'm really interested in sort of a double edge of quantum computing. Generally, I refer to quantum physics and its concepts when I'm working with new technologies beyond, besides quantum, like AI as well, because it really helps you think through some of the ways technologies interact with the world. So the double edge of quantum computing. One edge, as I've already mentioned, is how quantum computing might accelerate what Zuboff calls the age of surveillance capitalism. Surveillance capitalism is essentially an economic system centered around the commodification of personal data, which actually is now one of the most valuable resources on Earth. But the processing of this data leads to tech companies and governments nudging us towards their desired behaviours for profit and control. As, I, as we heard just when I was speaking about the various algorithms that run on quantum computers, you could definitely get this sense that these algorithms will accelerate the surveillance capitalist regime. And what this brings is a danger um, to, to our human liberty, our autonomy and our well-being. The other edge of quantum computing is one that you might have thought about when I was speaking about the concepts of entanglement, superposition and measurement, because they're quite counterintuitive. It really is like a different way of seeing the world. So quantum superposition really lets us think and act perhaps in a more plural and interconnected way. Rather like that quantum atom that could be on either on the left and the right at the same time, objects, quantum objects, no longer have these fixed, immutable properties, but rather they can shapeshift, they can become irrational, queer, hybrids, loops, can think more about non-linear time, about non-locality, and away from the usual ideas of cause and effect. The philosopher and feminist theorist Karen Barad and others use quantum as a starting point when developing a post-human performative theory of material reality. There, what Barad does is really get rid of objects or subjects, but thinks about how a material reality emerges as things, entities, humans, non-humans, all mingle and entangle with each other. She's using quantum as a metaphor, but it really does help us think through and work through and act differently by engaging with these ideas. For another example is that quantum entanglement really reminds us that we are not individuals, but that we're actually all part of this global web of relations. You know, the air that I breathe is influenced by all the different people and cars and so on that exist within London and elsewhere. And this is super important because it lets us think of a responsibility for being in part of this system. And obviously that means something given that we're facing this huge climate crisis. Quantum also helps us to think and act not in binaries or with rigid categories, but really rather as dynamic hybrids and blurs and multiples and thinking nuances, which again is really important today given the political polarisation across the globe.